I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 102, Forsaken 64. Released in 1998, this game was developed by Iguana Entertainment and published by Acclaim. Here we have yet another game I'd absolutely never heard of. It must have a decent fan base though, because the game was remastered on modern consoles a few years ago. Honestly, these Acclaim games have been pretty hit or miss, so who knows what to expect. I have no knowledge going in, so my perspective is fresh. Let's get into it. The game has a single player campaign mode, so we'll be doing that to beat this game. It asked me to choose a character. I think they all have different attributes and things like speed, defense, attack, etc. There was Locasena, Photoid, Nimsu Sin, LAJ, Clark Culver, Earl Sleek, Trucker, and Beard. I chose Nimsu Sin for no reason at all. I then had to select my mission, of which there was only one available called Nuke. So, guess we'll start with that. It gives a small briefing about the mission itself. We're against the Mechanoid Defense Force in an abandoned nuclear plant. And then we get into the gameplay. So it's like a first person fully 3D shooter. You're piloting a hovercraft that can move freely along the X, Y, and Z axes. It can be a bit tough to control at first, but after getting used to it, the movement's quite fluid. The UI can be a bit daunting due to all that's on screen. In the top left, the blue bar is your shield and the red bar is your health. You won't lose any health until the shield's completely gone. To the right is the lives counter, and under it is information about the objective of the mission you're currently on. The top right has your available weapons, and the center is the crosshair as well as a bar conveying your ammo for the current weapon. But yeah, in this first mission, my only objective was to kill all the enemies. It was really easy. Mission 2 is the knowledge base. It talks about how we'll be within touching distance of Babalos, whatever the heck that is. We have to find a hidden defensive shield monitor. Yep, sure, all that makes sense. This level brought the first instance of a forced perspective change. It really caught me off guard, and I can imagine it's not good for motion sickness. The design of these levels is almost always typically narrow hallways branching in many different directions. It was compared by dozens of people in my chat to a game called Descent, although I've never played that before. Eventually, I found my way to a circular room where a boss spawned. I mean, I guess it's a boss. It's a stronger enemy, at least. Not really sure what to do, I just kind of face tanked it until it died. However, I also lost all my HP and I had my first death of the game. Thankfully, you can get checkpoints throughout each level, although you spawn without all your power-ups. After killing the boss, I was completely lost. There's no kind of map for the level, so you just rely on memorization and kind of wandering around. The weapons you get in the game are pretty cool as well. I picked up the beam laser, which does about what you'd expect. I think there's about 10 weapons in total, including the sus gun, which is a funny name in the post Among Us era. Finally, after wandering around for ages, I found a room with a bomb inside, and it showed an objective at the top that I'd collected it. I had to now place it at the defensive shield monitor, which, yep, I totally know where to find that. Oh, it was that weird looking room after I killed the boss. When I set the bomb, it showed a timer in the corner, and I was supposed to escape before it went off. I have no clue how I found my way back to the entrance, but I did, beating the mission. Phew! Mission 3 is the Biodome. With the explosion, the MDF are aware of our presence and have assembled a force to stop us at the Biodome. This is another one of those kill all the enemies missions. If you're wondering, you also lose all your power-ups and weapons when you start a new level. Real quick, I'll talk about the graphics and music of the game. The frame rate's generally stable, even when there's a lot of enemies on screen. The textures all look pretty solid, and the UI elements are nice and crisp. The music's pretty decent too, it's got a very 90s techno feel to it, but I'll admit it gets quite repetitive, especially that one song where the piano's playing this awkward rhythm over and over. This mission was standard. There was some new enemy that would spawn in a blue force field that pulled me into it, also dealing damage over time. It is so annoying to deal with. I ended up beating this one with only one death. Mission 4 is kill the head. My only objective was to kill the prototype war vessel, Metatank. Fighting my way through all the chaos, I eventually found where it was. Man, this thing is so tanky and it deals huge damage. 
I love how the game keeps being like, incoming missile, incoming missile, incoming missile. Thanks for letting me know, but what do you expect me to do? I got absolutely destroyed and I died before taking Meta Tank down. This revealed a massive problem of the game for me. When you run out of lives, you go all the way back to the beginning. Man, you gotta beat the whole thing like that? Oh my god. This is gonna be really, really hard. What the heck? Well, not always, but more on that later. So it leads to you repeating a lot of stuff you already did. I did discover that you can restart a mission without losing a life, so if you find you're doing poorly on any given attempt, you can give it another go without any penalty. So anyway, I made my way back to the meta tank fight. This time I was a bit more prepared. One thing I haven't talked about is how you can have multiple weapons equipped. You can see there are two weapon names in the top right corner. The game has a main weapon and secondary weapon fire, and you can do both at the same time. With this, I depleted Metatank's health in just a few seconds. After going back to the start, I was done with that mission. With that level beaten, I was greeted with a beautiful sight. A save menu popped up. For whatever reason, the devs only let you save the game after certain missions. Like, milestone missions, essentially. Why they don't let you save after every level, I'll never understand. Maybe just to make the game harder or something? I don't know. So now it's on to mission 5, Man Mech. He's one of the masters of the MDF and he lives within the Babalas complex. Guess we're gonna go kill him. I made my way through the level, you know, flying around and all that. The levels start to look pretty samey after a while with the similar aesthetics and narrow hallways all over the place. I found my way to an open room where Man Mech was waiting. It was more like a robot you'd see on BattleBots. I had a Titan, which is essentially a nuke, and that took a ton of its health. However, when I got it to about 10% left, it just stopped getting down. I couldn't finish him off, and I eventually died. On my second attempt, again, I died when it was at about 10% HP. Why was he getting so tanky? Well, I didn't notice at the time, but when his health hits that 10% mark, it pops up saying Beacon Activated at the bottom in green text. It's actually impossible to kill it, and it wanted me to travel further down to fully activate the beacon. With this, a new blue meter appeared, and it was essentially a survival section to just not die until it had fully drained. I think the beacon's actually to just capture Man Mech, so we don't want to kill him. Mission 6 is called Four Uneasy Pieces. There's some weapon called the Black Hole Gun, and it's split into four pieces. We would like to have that gun for ourselves, because I guess it's really good. The look of this level at least changed up a bit, with there being a tunnel with flowing lava. It's just nice to see something new. The pieces of the Black Hole Gun are just kind of floating around. You'd think if it's this powerful, it'd be guarded more, you know? About halfway through the level, I reached a section that was completely underwater. Or maybe it was above water. Perspective's weird in this game, but what I do know is I passed some plane that there was water on one side, but not the other. There doesn't seem to be any kind of air meter or anything like that, so I think it's just mostly for looks. But yeah, after getting all four pieces, the mission was over. Another level down. Mission 7 is Temple. We are tasked with killing everyone in the temple. Uh, sure, I can do that. One weird thing here was there was a wall with a bunch of cracks in it. That's classic video game code for, hey, blow this wall up and there's something cool behind it. However, nothing happened when I did. The manual mentions there's all kinds of secrets you can find by blowing up walls, but I never found anything like that in my entire playthrough. Anyway, nothing special in this level outside of that, just killed all the bad guys in one. Thankfully, I got another save point after this mission. Mission 8 is Dreadnought. They just really want us to kill Dreadnought, I guess. That's about it. I have no idea who's even issuing these objectives to us or anything like that. The game doesn't explain the story very well. So Dreadnought was right beside me when I spawned. It's this massive robot thing that's constantly laying mines, and it has quite a few turrets on it. At first it doesn't move at all, and I wasn't really sure why it was just sitting there. I also couldn't lower its health either. I had to destroy all the turrets from the structure, then Dreadnought broke free from it. Man, this boss was so annoying. Basically, Dreadnought just flies in a loop through this hallway that's a big circle. Once in this stage of the fight, you can hurt it. The reason it's so annoying is if you're in front of it, you'll get shot by missiles that deal huge damage. 
If you're behind it, you can't be hit by the missiles, but then you gotta deal with those mines that it constantly lays. Like, there just isn't a great way to hit it without getting lit up. The best strat I came up with was to just chase it from behind and hope I wasn't next to it when the mines are laid. Using this, I got its health down to about 10% when it stopped again. I still hadn't noticed that beacon activated text by this point. <laughs> I think I'm blind. Luckily, I ran into the beacon by complete accident, and then I'd realized what was going on. Fighting Dreadnought was tough enough, but this part sucked so much. It's another survival thing, and this time enemies constantly spawn in during the countdown. Like, they will appear directly beside you. No matter where I went, I had things spawning in right beside me. Well, everywhere except one spot. I don't know if this works consistently or I got lucky, but on one of my attempts, I picked up the beacon and just ran to the corner where it spawned. For some reason, none of the enemies appeared here and Dreadnought couldn't see me to shoot missiles. I literally just sat there AFK until the beacon timer ran out, winning easily. Mission number 9 is called Tube. There's a prototype spawn carrier unit in the New York subway system. We've gotta destroy it. The boss in this one was different in that there were a set amount of enemies in the level, and I had to kill them to even access the boss. This became quite problematic, especially with these floating guys that are tough to hit and get a lot of cheap shots off. Once I got it down to 10 enemies remaining, the arena where the boss was opened. Of course, I had no health left by this point, so I was screwed. It wasn't so much that it was hard to reach the boss, but it was hard to reach it without losing a lot of health. Sure, I had lives and could respawn to take it out that way, but I was trying to save those for later missions, as I expected them to be harder. So if I didn't one-shot the level, I would just reset. God, these things that teleport in, they suck so much. This was the first mission I really got stuck on. I ended up just kind of memorizing the entire level, where and when certain enemies would spawn so that I could have as little things shooting at me as possible. When those things spawned directly behind me, it was so slow to turn around, and as far as I can tell, you can't adjust the look sensitivity in this game. The only healing item I knew of was a single shield power-up that restored half my shield's health. I had to be very careful, and I had to miss as few shots as possible. There was this one spot, though, where I couldn't find anything better than just fighting all the enemies at once. On this run, though, I'd barely taken any damage prior to this area. Gosh, they just all spawn in behind you, and there's so many of them. Finally, though, I did make it to the boss with an acceptable level of health. Another problem I was running into was my weapon energy. If you run out, your shots become very slow and weaker. The devs just didn't put enough healing and ammo in this level. That was the main problem. I found if I camped in a certain spot just outside of its room, it would chase me and get stuck. Somehow though, it teleported, or maybe it glitched away. I died, and I decided I'd cut my losses and use one of my lives here to just finish this one off. With a respawn, it was so easy. But at what cost? The next mission was called Death to the Invader. Now the MDF have found our home base, and they want to destroy our computer matrix. I've gotta defend it, cause I guess that's bad if it gets destroyed. Well, that last mission sucked, and this one's somehow even worse. So there's these vulnerable points of attack on the Matrix computer, and waves of enemies come in to destroy it. Not to mention, most of them have that awful gravity attack that hurts and makes it impossible to aim. I wouldn't mind a defense mission like this if it were obvious what I even needed to defend. There's all these twisty, turny, weird tunnels to access each different point of the Matrix. It's so confusing, just like every other level. By far, the worst part is all the enemies won't spawn unless you move to certain areas. So you can't like just sit next to the matrix and defend it. You gotta go out of your way to trigger the enemies to teleport in next to the thing, and then you gotta sprint back and try to kill them. It just makes it unnecessarily hard, it's quite frustrating. Along with that, if they do destroy the matrix, you lose a life and have to restart the entire level anyway. This happened to me, and I figured losing two lives in a row was too much to take, so I went back to my last save. You know, the Dreadnought mission, because you can't save on every level for whatever reason. This time around, I just barely squeaked by in that previous level without dying, which was awesome. Then in the next mission, I killed all the enemies, but a boss spawned in afterward named Nutta. Great name, by the way. Nutta is another ship just like us, and is also so small. It feels kind of weird, because I guess that's how big we are too, right? Luckily, Nutta was more interested in killing me than the Matrix computer, so I was able to just barely squeak by this one. 
Those two missions alone took a third of my playtime for this entire game. After this mission, it plays a cutscene with dialogue saying you've merely scratched the surface of this game, and you need to seek out the enemy heart. Then it shows some text with alternative objectives I need to complete to truly finish the game. One is complete the first mission, Nuke, in under 2 minutes 30 seconds. Another is finding the secrets of Catch the Orb and Power Down missions, which I didn't even have access to yet. I guess you could call this a bad ending? I don't know, but it definitely didn't feel like the game was beaten yet. So onward we go. Speedrunning the nuke mission was kind of fun. I had to memorize all the power up and enemy locations. Usually it ended up with me missing a single enemy and getting lost. It took like 10 minutes or so to get the goal time. This opened up two new branches in the mission select for Catch the Orb and Knowledge Base. Catch the Orb was mentioned in that bad ending text, so I went with it. My objective was to capture the Golden Orb of Matter because it is of great religious significance to the MDF. Metatank was here for whatever reason, and this time I had to kill it for real. In the next room, I saw the Golden Orb just chilling there, but some guy named Cerberus swooped in and stole it before me. After killing all the enemies in the first room, another boss named Scepter appeared. Scepter was so annoying because he has this missile that unequips all your weapons and power-ups. They just scatter all over the place and you have to pick them up again. I was so confused the first time it happened too, I didn't know what was going on. On the second attempt, I killed Scepter and he dropped a ton of loot. It behaves like you killed another player in a multiplayer match. Oh yeah, this game has multiplayer for like versus matches. I moved further into the level and picked up this object that was floating. It said it was a dummy golden orb of matter. Uh, I think I got scammed. Past that, a third boss spawned in, HKS. Jesus man, this level can't give me a break. These guys were so tiny. I tried to hit them with a the titan, but I kind of missed and blew myself up. I decided to continue on despite the death, and I took those two clowns out. I'd obtained the real golden orb now, and I just had to find the way out. However, that wasn't what I found. Instead, I found a fourth boss named Joe. Dude, it never ends. I died a second time and decided that was too much, so I restarted. A half hour later, so I made it back and had a new trick. I had one of those scatter missiles, so I shot it at Cerbero and he dropped the golden orb. I'll be taking that, thanks. With that, I was able to go back to the start and beat the mission without even killing him. The next mission was Alpha, and it was another one of those just kill all the enemies missions. So easy to do, but at least there was some lava to look at. Now I was on to Maldroid. We were tasked with finding and defeating the warlord, Maldroid. It's another one of those beacon missions. Maldroid looked like he was out of Star Wars, some wild walking robot thing. I just kind of face tanked it and spammed all my weapons and it worked out. I touched the beacon and prepared for the worst, but instead I just kind of sat there again. The enemies stopped spawning and I guess this is a recurring bug with these types of missions. Easy game, baby. Next up was Ship, another kill all the enemies mission on a troop transport ship. Easy clear on the second try. These ones are kind of like busy work. I was also greeted with a lovely save prompt after this. Gotta be close to the end now, right? Now I'm on the mission Power Down. I'm tasked with destroying the MDF's Com Navi router. Yeah, sure, why not? I found some button on the wall and shot it. A timer appeared at the bottom of the screen, and it gave no explanation as to why or what it was for. It ran out and nothing really happened, so uh, I don't know. Oh, it opened some doors that were locked at the start of the level, that makes sense. There were these turrets through the door that were so tanky. It felt like I was fighting a bunch of mini-bosses. The majority of this level is just hitting buttons and trying to figure out what they do. It's even more maze-like than all the previous ones. On my next attempt at the level, I found cheese for shooting the turrets. There was this certain spot I could sit to have vision on them without them being able to hit me. This saved my health so much. After quite a few deaths, I made it to the room with the router. It's this tower-like thing with some switches around it. When one is pressed, a door opens nearby which spawns quite a few enemies. I dealt with them all, but I couldn't figure out how to destroy it. On one side was a tiny opening with a red light, and that was the weak spot apparently. The next mission was called Save the Drone. I had to protect this drone that was carrying a nuke through a bunker. This one absolutely sucks. For some unknown reason, devs continue to put escort missions in their game to this day, and the N64 wasn't any different. 
I had to slowly move with the drone as it moved along a track. Oh man, it's just not fun to sit around waiting. Why did they put this in? Not to mention, sometimes enemies will spawn in from behind to prevent you from going ahead and clearing out all the guys along the way. So no matter what strat you do, there's a lot of standing around. There's these switches on the path that change which track the drone will move along. Choose wisely, because if you're wrong, it gets stuck and you just have no way to win. There was this one part where there was an elevator for the drone and I had to go way off into some tunnel to activate it. Why did they build the switch so far away? It should be beside the elevator. When you leave the drone to do that, of course enemies spawn on top of it to chip down its health while I'm so far away. Oh yeah, another thing that frustrated me was when you kill enemies. This was a big problem here, but it really applies to every mission. When you kill an enemy, sometimes it'll just explode. Other times, it'll fly out of control and then explode. It seems like the direction it travels is random, but it sure sucks when it travels directly towards you. There's like no way to move away from it in time. No counterplay. I died on this one, but I continued on. It felt way too hard to try to beat this one without dying, so I gave up one of my lives here. Also, the level was slow and boring, and I just couldn't be bothered doing it again. I couldn't find my way back to the drone after spawning in, but apparently it finished the mission on its own. Nice job, drone. Next up was Battle Base. This is where the power crystal is held, which provides power to the entire Babalos base. Still no idea what that is, but apparently that's our enemy. My mission was to just locate the power crystal, not destroy it or steal it. Hopefully that means it's easy. Well, as you might predict, it was not easy. In fact, as I'm reviewing my footage for this video, I immediately recognize this level. There are so many turrets here. The best thing I could find was to hide behind a wall and strafe back and forth to slowly but surely kill them. After killing all enemies, the door to the main room will open. There's a ton of turrets in here, but thankfully they give you a golden power pod, which puts all your powers to the max. After picking up a beacon and waiting the timer out, I was done. Huh, maybe this wasn't as bad as I remembered. Now it's time for the final mission in this branch, Romcon. This is a glimpse of the final battle according to the intel. I had to enter his lair and activate the beacon. You know the drill by now. Romcon is in this lava filled room with a bunch of platforms to stand on. It's like this red octopus looking robot thing, I don't know. This boss is infuriating in that it has one of those scatter missile attacks and it uses it way too often. I don't think there's a way to dodge that attack. If there is, I didn't figure it out. Other than that, it's not too bad. It doesn't deal all that much damage, but I was spending most of the fight picking up my items. It took 5 or 6 tries and then I got him down to that 10% mark and the beacon was activated. I searched around and found it and then I just camped out for a minute and that was the end of that mission. It does another one of those cutscene things, and the voice told me I struck a major blow to the mechanized defense force, but my final objective still remained. Conquer Babalas. It showed more text telling me I had to now complete the nuke mission under 1 minute and 40 seconds. It also talked about how I needed to master the sewer mission, something about percentages. And there were two ways to beat the stabilizer mission, and I needed to find the secret area to reach Babalos. Man, how am I supposed to know all this stuff? Oh, I know, the official strategy guide. It promotes it every time you turn the game on. I don't think Acclaim Publishing is still in business though, so uh, yeah. Maybe GameFAQs is just as good. Well, at least speedrunning Nuke again didn't take long. I got a 131 on my very first attempt. For now, this unlocked a new branch of missions for me. On to defend the power. The MDF are attacking our base, so I need to defend the four reactor cores as they rise in sequence. So there's these green cores that a bunch of enemies try to attack. It's my job to not allow them to be destroyed. It's easy enough at first, just hang out near the core and shoot everything nearby. After it's finished deploying, the health bar goes away and that one's safe. The issue comes from the subsequent cores. They will start rising whether you're near them or not, so you gotta zoom there. 
The second one in particular has a lot of missile enemies next to where it spawns, so uh, good luck with that. I ended up discovering that you could just completely ignore the first core. The enemies that spawn near it aren't strong enough to destroy it in time, so I could just go to the second core's location immediately. This let me preemptively kill all the enemies nearby, making it much easier to reach the other two in time. The main thing that helps with this though is ammo. If I defended all four cores entirely, I'd surely run out at the end. So yeah, after defending all four cores, the mission was beaten. Now it's time for the refinery. This is just a boring old kill all the enemies mission, but it was welcome after all those harder ones. One thing of note is the start of this level has all these awesome power-ups locked inside a cage, but you can't get them. That's just rude. These types of missions were easy by this point. Well, now we're on the sewer mission. It said I needed to master this mission, and it's all about percentages. Honestly, there's nothing on game facts about something special this one, so I don't know what it was talking about. It just says we have to kill hordes of enemies in four minutes. I decided to make sure that I did enough, I'd kill all the enemies. And I mean all of them. And now it's the stabilizers mission. This was the one it said I needed to find the secret area in. Apparently the Tolchok reactor is approaching meltdown, so I need to find 5 stabilizer crystals to cool it. Certain parts of the level are blocked off until you get them, with it telling you that a certain number of crystals are needed to open doors. I swear, this was the biggest level of all. I was constantly lost. Plus, there was this one room that was like overheating or something, so it damaged me while I was in there. After getting a third crystal, I ran into a boss, X-Cop. I just shot a titan at him and killed him in one shot. Then after getting the fourth crystal, there was yet another boss, A-Force 1. <laughs> Quite the interesting name for that guy. It was really easy, just super tanky, but it took a while to kill. Once I'd killed A-Force 1, it said I beat the mission. I was given a save prompt as well. I guess I'd achieved the secret or whatever it was talking about because it unlocked the final mission, Babalos. Not sure how else I was supposed to beat that level. It didn't give any intel about this one. It did pop up saying I couldn't kill man mech with normal fire and I'd need to find a different way. But yeah, this is it. The final battle. The thing they've been hyping us up for from the start. I ran into man mech a bit into the level and I recognized this is a boss from before. Turns out this level has all the old bosses we fought, starting with man mech. I got him down to that 10% mark and I wasn't able to finish him off. I followed him into this big open room and he stopped in the center. With pressing the switches inside, the floor opened and crushed him. Thankfully it treats that as its own level and the next segment of Babalos resets your health. In part 2 we're fighting against Maldroid again. It says we need a much weightier weapon to kill him. What the heck kind of word is weightier? Well, I don't know if it's broken or what, because I just killed it with my regular weapons. I'll take it. Then I had to deal with Dreadnought again. It says it loses its composure under pressure. Quite the hint for winning. I got it down to 10% and there was a lever that clearly looked like it was meant to crush him. I don't know if the cutscene was glitchy or what, but he died, so I guess I'll take it. Now I've got to destroy the power crystal from a few missions ago. It's kind of weird revisiting this area. It's the one with the really powerful turrets. Lucky for me, I already knew how to handle this one. And with the power crystal destroyed, it was on to the final part of the game. It's time for the ultimate showdown with Romcon. It says we need to use natural forces to kill him, and if we do, it will cripple the MDF. Since I knew this was the last mission, I wasn't afraid to use all my lives to take him out. However, it ended up not even being needed. I got him down to 10% and he fleed to a room underground. There's these switches under the water that I had to shoot and that killed him. I don't know why it killed him, but sure, I'll take it. It plays another one of those cutscenes and gives the finale of the story. With all the MDF's leaders dead, they're no longer a threat. This allowed all the humans to return to Earth. I didn't know we were on Earth, honestly. Now the humans will try to reclaim the Earth as their home. And then the credits finally play. Game complete. There were a few cheat codes I decided to check out after beating it. One is a wireframe mode, a common cheat for the time. It's real interesting to see the design of these levels and I'm sure it was not an easy task to create them. It makes it so much more impressive seeing it this way I think, although it's not a way you'd want to play the game. There was also a turbo mode cheat which just makes you move super fast. The game's pretty unplayable like this so I don't know why you would use it. And finally there was a gore mode. 
It just makes the animation for your death a bit more gruesome. I'm sure suburban moms all over America would have been up in arms in the 90s if they knew about this. So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating Forsaken 64. This game was quite innovative for the time, I'd say. Sure, everyone was calling it a copy of Descent, but well, I've never seen that game, so this was new to me. The movement in 3D was really cool, but it would be way better with a dual joystick controller. The gameplay for the campaign got pretty repetitive, but it was fun. I think the boss fights were pretty bland, they could have been more creative with them. The graphics and frame rate were good, and the music was decent. I imagine this is yet another game that is more fun in multiplayer, but I think it's worth at least checking out for the story mode to see if you like it. I gave it a 6 out of 10 for enjoyability, and a 4 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. Ah. You know, we've been, we've been getting some better games lately. We might be due for a real stinker. But, uh, let's see what we get. Three, two, one, go! 175? What's that? Oh my god, it finally happened! We're playing the next NFL Blitz game, and, uh, also the first football game of the challenge. The next one is just... NFL Blitz. I don't mind that at all. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.